six years. That is how long I had been waiting for Promise Neverland. And the wait was so worthwhile. Now, this may seem strange. Promise Neverland's first chapter came out in 2016. Three years ago. So how could I have been waiting for that long? Well, back in 2013, I first got into seasonal anime. And I did so with a kind of obscure show that you probably haven't heard of called Attack on Titan. Alright, maybe you have heard of it. I loved Attack on Titan. The first episode reeled me in, and I have been hooked ever since, especially with Season 3 going in directions I never would have guessed. But as much as I like where it's gone, I feel like I never got the type of story that I was promised at the start. After the Titan broke through the wall, killing tons of people, I thought it'd be the story of young Eren trying to survive against monsters far more powerful than he could ever hope to be. But then we got a time skip, and then the Titan shifters, and all the politics, and yeah. Which, as good as that is, that's not what I wanted. Then there are those other shows, like Black Bullet had a similar conflict with the monsters wiping out much of humanity, but then the main character was just overpowered and fought them off with the help of some lollies. Or Seraph of the End, which had time skips and the main character getting powers and some boring school stuff, and then I dropped it. But then, Promise Neverland came around. It's the story of these young kids living a sheltered life within these walls. By the end of the first episode, the kids' peaceful life is shattered. The wall's broken down, but in a figurative sense this time. So now the kids have to find a way to survive against monsters far more powerful than they can imagine. But this time, no time skips, no surprise power-ups, and no boring slice of life. So finally, a show that gave me everything I wanted from Attack on Titan. And not just that. It is a show that, that matched my taste perfectly. When I first saw it, I considered it among my favorite anime of all time. And since it's been a few months and I still feel that way, I don't think this is recency bias. It is one of only a handful of shows to get a perfect 10 for me on Mal, and that's out of over 300 shows I've completed. And while I could go on about all the different reasons that I think it's so great, I instead want to focus on if some of the reasons it's able to resonate with me so well, and to do so without many spoilers. So, those reasons are the suspense and horror, how it uses shonen tropes, the mind games, and the whole mystery of the world. Promise Neverland is a horror anime, but not in the sense that it tries to have all these super scary scenes. Well, it does in episode 1 when they find that thing. But after that, the show relies more on co the constant feeling of dread and fear. From episode 1, we know that things could go badly and the characters could die at any moment. So the show uses that fear to drive all the suspense throughout the show. There's just a sense of dread, of terror, around all the characters that know the truth, and th that it could all be over if they mess up. And that gave way to every action the characters faced. Though, of course, shonen storytelling is one of the things that made me look forward to the show. Sometimes I feel I've outgrown this type of storytelling. But with shows like this, I feel it's more that I've outgrown the cliché shonen. I need something different, even if it's small, to get into these type of shows. And Promised Neverland is definitely different. So I loved the ideas here of not giving up, of all the friendship between the characters, and just how dedicated Emma is to saving everyone. But Promised Neverland is not a simple show where everyone makes it out unscathed, and determination can only get the characters so far, as we learn in some especially painful moments that leave the characters broken. But even so, they're not fully defeated, and I love that moment that their defeat turned into victory. Sure, they still have a long way to go, but in that moment, they'd won. And while the victory is great on its own, it's because of all their failures and defeats up to that point that their victory had so much power. The mind games are also absolutely wonderful. These kids were made to be super smart and are able to think like 12 steps ahead of their opponents, but then their enemies are playing five-dimensional chess while deriving the secrets of quantum mechanics. Yeah, these characters make me feel dumb. But really, the mind games were just great. I liked how this was a situation where neither character could fight with physical power and they were limited in what they could do. So I was on edge seeing what character would slip up first. Plus you add in a few betrayals and not exactly knowing what some of the characters are going to do and well, you've got an amazing story. Lastly, the world itself is wonderful. There's so many things we don't know about the world which makes it great. It reminds me of Attack on Titan in this regard, with us slowly, very slowly, learning more. And if this is like Titan, it will take seven years before you actually get real answers. 
which that would be fun if we get like a season of this every year for seven years. I'm okay with that. Though throughout the season, we got a few hints of what's going on in the outside, though not really many answers. I like this though. A mystery is better when we don't know everything at once, but instead see it slowly unraveled over time. So those are some reasons that I like the show so much and with as few spoilers as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video for the 12 Days of Anime, and come back tomorrow where I will talk about another one of my favorites of the year.